Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're finally here. We've made it to the Scorched Sands. The paths have rejoined, and we're trying to take down two of the biggest threats throughout this entire game, Kaliak and Volta. And oh my, they're not going down without a fight, because fucking hell, man. Again, when Sacred Stones has that problem with um, some units, uh, the main army being really easy and the boss being really hard, this chapter really accentuates it, because holy shit, well, more so Volta. Kaliak isn't too bad, but Volta, fucking hell, man. Yeah. But as you can see, we, I went with Erica's path. And again, it's because, again, just to remind people, it's mainly because A, I prefer Erica's path slightly. B, because the units that I feel really needed the bot, need, really needed the boost, like Erica, and the fact Ewan turned out well, and stuff like that, and so on, you know, really helped them, and it's going to benefit them a lot more in the long run. Especially because Erica's mandatory. So, it'd be, it's good to have a powerful Erica. I'd rather have, you know, a 12 strength Erica than a 9 strength Erica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 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 Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Also, yeah, I can't remember who I give the thingamajig to. That, um, because you get lots of, because, you know, this is a desert map, so naturally, you get a lot of, whatchamacallit, um, treasure. I can't remember who I give that, um, thingy to. Uh, we'll probably find out eventually. I, mm. <laughs> and no one likes Reeve. <laughs> Kaliak, fuck off. Selena, fuck off. Volta, fuck off. <laughs> Dressel, fuck off. <laughs> Everyone's just like, yo, fuck off, Reeve. <laughs> that should be a thing. Every time Reeve enters the scene, aside from like, uh, even Vigas just goes, fuck off. <laughs> uh, the time is nigh, Erica. I will have you. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're promoting Joshua. And again, I go Swordmaster because, you know, Swordmaster. I, oh, Colm is my assassin. Uh, do I promote anyone else? I can't remember. As a matter of fact, why didn't I promote Joshua at the end of that chapter? Because I didn't, I couldn't retreat. I couldn't go back and grind, so. Oh well. At least it's, yeah. Again, oh, that plus five HP. Oh, <laughs> they get no skills and, skills and speed, but they don't really need it. Oh, and I get Nimi, yeah. So, you know which one I'm going with. Going with Ranger, because it's just better. Again, I still find it weird how the sniper, like, the ranger's bow's big, but the sniper's bow, even even the, this bow's kind of, like, normal size, the sniper's bow is fucking huge! You can whack someone in the face with it! In fact, snipers should have, um, you know what would make snipers cool if they did have one to two range attack with bows? They just smack him in the face with the bow. <laughs> just like, fuck you! Bang! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> that hurt! Yes, it did! Yes, it did! Okay, now we're getting into the chapter. Alright, so Scorched Sands. This chapter I actually really like. It's one of my favourite Sacred Stones. It's a desert map, but the desert only takes up the centre stage. There's plenty of normal areas for your units to move around. Class, uh, again, um, thingy for writing here is impressive. Um, what do you call it? The bosses are hard. Very hard, actually, but they are quite relatively fun. Oh, <laughs> Erica's not off to the best start. Yeah, fuck off! Um... Uh, Story-wise, it's really cool, just the two color merging. And again, there are respawning units that come later and, and do challenge you. And it's just like a really, like, admittedly, the chapter can be a bit of an endurance because they do respawn quite a bit. But for the most part, you know, and the treasure to get, so the chapter will constantly keep you invested. It can drag a bit, but overall, I just find it to be really fun. And it's just like, you know, it really is a divide and conquer type thing because of how the enemies are laid out. It's good to divide up units, not just all band together. And there goes Ewan. And it, well, dude had the Iron Blade, so I'm not surprised that he's doubling, because again, the Iron Blade will weigh him down. You know what? You know what I'd love? Um, actually, Dorcas already kind of does that. A Fire Emblem game where a unit may not have the best speed stat, but their con is so high, nothing weighs them down, so they're, they're actually faster than quite a lot of units. But again, Dorcas already... In FE7, to be fair, that's mainly to do with bad speed cap, but in FE7, that's kind of the case. Yeah, they've got at least two much already. Um... Because, um, what do you call it? Dorcas can outspeed a lot of enemies from base because his, like, their con is shit and their speed is shit, whereas his speed is six and his con is relative, is pretty good because he can fight it, they usually have good con. So for him, it's not a problem, you can just take him out easy peasy. And he can double for quite a bit, even with his 20% speed growth. <laughs> because again, bases over growths. That's just how it rolls in Fire Emblem. Well, for the most part, because. I think the only game where growth really meant a lot was Awakening because everyone's growth rates are through the fucking roof. I mean, at the end of the day, bases will always be extremely important, but growths in that, uh, in Fingamajig, you know, they are no doubt a big factor. It's not like, say, the original Gaiden or Binding Blade where growths are really... Unless you have really high availability, growths don't mean much. Like, Shana growths are fine because even though her bases aren't the best, you know, she's there for a long time. 
So if, if uh, you know, uh, I think growth's also a very availability dependent. That's why even though Nina has great growths, it doesn't matter her availability shit. But if a unit has good growths and starts, you know, thingamajig. That's why it, um, Nimi's actually relatively, like, one of the better GBA archers. Because she begins early, easy to train, and has good growths. So again, if you've got, if your growth rates are good and you're there early, it helps. I mean, at the end of the day, it's better to have better bases and better growths, but, you know, the point still stands. <laughs> point still stands. Especially because there's like the um there's zero percent there's zero percent growth first goes for growth something shit. Can you imagine there was a zero percent base run? <laughs> it's like your base is a zero. <laughs> you just got to rely on really good level ups. That'd be the weirdest fucking crutch ever. I don't even know how you can win if you've got zero strength unless you just use the base damage of the swords. But even then, unless the Aaron's got zero defense, I don't think it would work that way. And now I'm just contemplating where to go. Yeah, um, I, I get loot and thing to promote in this chapter. Don't worry, everyone will be promoted by the end of this, except Ewan and Ross. They're the, they're the ones who promote, ne promote next time. So yeah, there's a vendor. I don't have much money left. <laughs> Just wanted to show off. Good old hatchet. Nope, nope, nope. Oh yeah, just got the iron axe on standby. You know, Natasha... Wait. Uh, I, I was wondering if there's like, you could, um, whatchamacallit. If you could, like, talk, go visit or something like that. Because, you know, it's one of those big areas. Anyway, Larish has time to shine. And Natasha's gonna go help out Joshua because, well, you know. <laughs> you know how it works here. You know the drill, ladies and gentlemen. You know the drill. Yeah, Ephraim will join us, I think, at the end of the first turn. Ephraim will join and then you've got to... Or a couple of turns in. I can't remember specifically. As you can see, they've got Paladins, they've got Bonites, they've got Women's, they've got Berserkers. Again, Binding Blade, I'll give it props. It's, it knows how to... It, sorry, not Binding Blade. Yeah, actually, Binding Blade was pretty decent with it too. But Sacred Stones, at least it has enemy variety down pat, especially because of the Sphinx Jigs. And there goes Joshua for 23. We're not even we've got seven more games after Fire Emblem um, Free Houses to get to top Fire Emblem 23, dude. Now it's Fire Emblem 21. <laughs> but he's probably just going to double. Oh, look, there goes Fire Emblem 21. Something tells me ever since making Thingy and Assassin and Joshua thing, we're going to get a lot of just um, non-killer non crit counts. Because we'll probably have killer, you know, crits to begin with. I mean, granted, if it was 30, that'd be more like the killer. But 21's still pretty good, the 20 margin. Oh, no crit that time. But I got so much HP, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <sighs> I swear the bars go up to 40 on the bottom, and then you got a um, the thing to... Wow! He didn't even get hurt. This what... Oh, yeah, I, mean, I forgot that Cole was bulky. Is he out of iron swords or just not fast enough? He's just not fast enough. I'll be... I'm surprised. I thought he would be fast enough. But then again... Oh, well. I'll take the bulk. Yeah, it's weird for Colm to be bulky. Then again, you know, when it comes to me and farming units, stuff just turns out weird. Like, Lynn, I got better strength than Hector. What? <laughs> so, hi, you've only got five strength. Ah, oh, you laugh now! Wait till I'm a Wyvern Knight! <laughs> no, I'll fuck you up something fierce! Especially when I use Pierce. There we go. Tana's ready to level up. And I do make her Wyvern Knight because, again, just want to capitalize on that strength. Whereas Vanessa, I want to focus more on the, you know, res and stuff and all that jazz. Oh, yeah, this Berserker. Oh, I didn't even hit. Interesting thing about this Berserker, in the Japanese version, he doesn't have a hand axe, he's only got a dragon axe. So here they gave him an extra weapon. But yeah, after the after that dude, I don't want him to get to the village. Get him, Colm. Oh, Colm's only got 2% crit, so yeah, he's not going to crit with that. Really? Really? I mean, 9 damage from a steel axe is actually rather impressive <laughs> defense, but really? 8% hit? Are you fucking serious? Uh, Garcia, you, you know what to do. Please don't miss. Nice shot. I just like the way they hold it with like the back of their hand instead of the other way around. It's just one of the weird little oddities. Nope. And there he goes again. So he's run out of criticals. Oh, it's funny because I'm live streaming Puff Radiance tonight. Which sword master will I go with? Well, I want to go with... Oh, Erica could double... Oh, wow. This is what happens when I get strength level ups and use a silver sword. I suddenly become a I suddenly become someone to mess with. No one to mess with. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 30 strength, cut my speed. 30 strength, cut my speed. And everyone's looking at her like, oh my god. Like you think about it, Erica has the same speed as Tana, but it's stronger. Ha ha Tana, ha ha Tana. I can fly. Shut up. <laughs> ha ha Tana, ha ha Tana. And there she goes. Which was, wait, how much plus... I think she gets like plus two strength, so she should be at 11, I think? Or maybe she gets plus three, I can't remember. It was plus two, yeah. The plus four can't, I'll take. 
So yeah, uh, now I have a relatively potent Erica, and I like it. Now, Cormac, yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm strong enough to take you all on. <laughs> and you can't hit me. <laughs> but yeah, with Path Radiance, I know Stefan is the best sword master. Cause just because his bases are sexy and his actually his availability is decent and watch him cool it. His growth's not too bad either. Oh, there goes loot again. Showing off. But like Xerox is who I want to use. It's gonna be redundant by this point because by the time I've uploaded this, I'll already actually I don't know if I'll be at the sword i I'll have even have a sword master yet, because it's only like a couple of chapters per week. But um Like Xerox is the one I want to go with because um I really, really, really like Xerox and I wanted to support Viliana. I know Mia comes first, but Mia, because her bases are worse. But I also know, like, certain, like, um, some people, certain someone, really want me to use Mia. So Mia, I think, will be level up dependent. She's gonna be like Nolan, she'll be growth dependent. If she gets good level ups, I'll consider keeping her. If not, get to the fucking bench, the baby. That's just how I roll. Oh, here comes Ephraim. Took your fucking time. Yeah, Ephraim's stats aren't as good. I mean, they're still- he's Ephraim, so it's no problem. But they're not as good as they- as, um... His stats in, when his path, but at the end of the day, what are you gonna do? At the end of the day, what are you gonna do? I'll do what I can to help. I mean, my bases aren't the best, but I have magic, and, you know, I'm level 10, so I- uh, we get that muscle, like, promo instantly. You know, they're, 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 I have potential, I have potential. Yeah, whatever you say. Okay, so let me talk about Null as a unit. Noel is okay, I'd say, because, well, his join time isn't great and he's not promoted. I mean, like, you know, that's kind of a thing. Stat-wise, not the best. His HP isn't amazing. His magic and res are good, but he's got zero luck of all things. And just, um, the other stats are just, like, okay, like skill and speed. For what it's worth, um, he can do decent magical damage. He's got C rank. Um, one thing that is useful for him is that he's level 10 and you get a Master Seal right near where he starts. So if you want to, you can promote him straight away. And, you know, to summon or Druid, and obviously you've got Summon X, that one's better. Um, and, what you can, and what's useful, he does, he can have decent, like, even though it's E rank, his high magic will help him with stars, so he can at the very least do that. So he's got some use. Again, he's not awful unit. If you want just, like, an extra magic user, go ahead. But... And that is, to be fair, he's probably better using better than Ewan, since Ewan takes time to train, whereas Noel just starts okay. So if you want a dark user, Noel is absolutely fine. But, you know, um, he's, he, like, if you just want an extra unit, that's fine, but he's not someone to really prioritize. Character-wise, he's actually quite interesting because of where he comes from and all his experience and his connection to Leon. He is quite, he's like a character that has a lot of insight into what's going on behind the scenes, and that's really cool. I don't use him much, but he's okay. Yeah, and he was like, you know, he was very involved with Ephraim and stuff like that. And another one of Grado's troops. <laughs> like Amelia. Obviously not involved, Amelia wasn't involved with Ephraim, but she was from Grado. And there goes, again, I love the way the axes are on heroes. They look so just, they look so sharp and pointy. Like, goddamn, that is really gonna hurt. <laughs> Tana's women looks huge. It's funny how the women lords and the women like riders have like, their women's have hands, but the women knights don't. Their their women's literally just have wings. Wings and feet. I mean that's more like an actual wyvern, but you know what I mean. Alright, loot. She is level 16. Eh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Noel's like, I need that luck stat. <laughs> so yeah, he just gets you can get a master still straight away. What's become of the queen? Ooh, um, have a drink. I mean, you know, Ephraim comes in, his bases are fine, and, you know, two assholes, same. His bases can figure me jig in this chapter. Just, you know, watch out for, um, just be careful of the bosses, they, um, think. But this whole segment at the bottom is literally just train Ephraim. <laughs> and there goes Tom. I used to be a Pegasus Knight like you, but then I, but then I took a Master Seal. But no, but then I took an Elysium whip to the women. And suddenly my Pegasus sprouted wing sprouted um sprouted a really, really long tail and fangs. Don't ask me how. Just don't ask me how. Surely she's if she's doing this, she should be close to promotion. Is she? Yes, she is. There goes Vanessa. And she Ah! <laughs> she was like the same as Tana, cap speed and nine strength. Yeah, you two are inseparable, it seems. 
And it should be Ewan's time to shine. Flux away! So yeah, next time, Pink Vanessa will become Falcon Knight. Why? Because I like making a Falcon Knight. We already have a Whipping Knight anyway. Tarnas the Whipping Knight. Oh, there he goes. What are his stats? It's been a while since I've seen Ewan's stats. Level 10? Oh my god, glass cannon much? <laughs> oh, speed, <laughs> speed, speed and magic, that's where it's at. Like, Jesus, man. He's like a glass cannon and a half. Speaking of glass cannon, well, he's not glass cannon, he's tanky as shit. Get hit. All his levels are going in strength. He's got like, no, he's got, he hasn't got a single level up in speed. <laughs> Who needs speed when you one-shot the enemy? And now we play the waiting game. So yeah, off they go. I don't think Ephraim can double them. But, you know, doesn't matter because he's just Ephraim. Okay, this whole thing, I remember I get Ephraim to this one bit and he just tank, 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 tanks. Move it. <laughs> Power motherfucker! Do I promote loot now or do I wait a bit? Because she's getting tanked by enemies so she might be gaining XP. It depends on how many enemies go after her. I don't think that many. I wonder if it'll activate a silencer skill. Doesn't look like it. Nah. <laughs> Again, of all the places for him to excel, why defense? Oh well, why not? Oh look, there's the Eclipse turn again. I swear, they're so much better in Binding Bay, but they're on 1 HP. Now they just do half damage, but their hit rate is so low, they might not even bother. God damn, I don't mind low hit rate if it's like you put you on 1 HP, because that's lethal. But in this case, it's literally just put them on half. It's like, oh, okay. Whatever. I, mean, I can understand it if you've got a giant HP pool, like 40, put you all the way down to 20. But even if your HP pool's pool is pretty small, then it's not that big of a deal. Because you only lose half, which most enemies would probably do to you to begin with. Oh. Nope. I feel like Ewan's gonna... Oh, damn! Someone likes Fire Emblem 5, for some reason. I mean, I've never played the game, so I can't say. <laughs> Just, yeah, Vanessa seems to like Fire Emblem 5. Oh, you motherfucker. Yeah, like, uh, a lot of um, Pegasus will spawn from the top, and then there'll be one more unit spawning from the back bar, I remember. St oh, yeah. Busting out the pre-promotes, I see. Now, do I attack that guy with Regan Life or not? Okay, oh, so many Pegasi. No, I just still lance all of it. Still lance for life. <laughs> Why? Because I don't want to use up my legendary weapon, I'm saving it. Saving it for when it matters. Even weapon disadvantage, you don't mean shit. Uh, it's interesting to, like, to think about all that's been going on with free houses and stuff like that. I mean, the reception's been mixed overall. Some people aren't down with the whole um, student, um, teacher student thing, and you know, stuff like that. I am, because I think it looks interesting, but I also just want to see like just how the game's gonna function. Like, is it gonna be like, um, is the student thing only going to be for like um, the first half of the game and then maybe later on it becomes much more like a traditional Fire Emblem game? Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just, it, you know, I always appreciate different and it looks to be changing things up for the better. Well, for better or worse, we'll have to find out when it actually, you know, <laughs> debuts. But it's not even that long off. It's only in um, July 26th, so we don't have to wait super long. I thought we'd have to wait longer just because... <sighs> I um, I thought they'd delay even further, which I personally would, I personally would have preferred if they pushed it back even further. But hey, summer's fine. Ah, <laughs> twenty-two speed. Oh, these people are so fast. And there goes Cormac Visley soon whip. And I always make him Wyvern Lord because we already have a Wyvern Knight. I don't know which one's better. I just make him Wyvern Lord. Even though his sprite doesn't even look that much different. Hold on, let me just look. Yeah, there's Wyvern Knight. And. There's with a Lord. What changed? Uh, I just can't... Uh, the wings look a bit bigger, I think? I can't tell. Oh, no, it's damn! 20 strength? That's what I like to see. <laughs> I've only got 10 speed. Doesn't matter when you deal that much damage. And you can do swords now. But I w I'm interested to see what, what direction Free Houses goes, because what we've seen of the game, that bit, that very much looks like just the first, maybe, 10 chapters. It doesn't feel like, the, like we've seen anything near the middle end game. So again, that's going to be interesting. I, want, I do want to know where it goes from here, like, what's it going to do? I reckon we'll get more stuff later down the line. But I think they're really going to focus on the new aspects of the game and the early game in the trailers, just to give you an idea of what you're getting into. 
I don't think they'll show off any of the late game stuff. Maybe mid game, probably late game. Doubt it, unless you want to say like a climactic cutscene. What if you just want to know like what's going to be the conflict? Because as things seem, it seems that like all three houses are in unison with one another and they're working to keep the peace. Obviously, there's going to be a rebellion. But I want to like there might be a rebellion, but I want to know like why is it going to be like someone's being possessed by an evil spirit, or there's actually legitimate reason? Maybe the houses are actually doing more harm than good. That'd be a really interesting story out to see where you, we realize, oh shit, we're the bad guys. Maybe we have to change our ways. Now, that could be really interesting. Kind of like what Conquest did, but it's a bit different because, you know, North from the get-go was kind of shown to be bad, whereas this one's more shown to be good, so to speak. And it, it seems more, you know, doesn't seem as dire. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of it. And he um, broke his steel lance. Oh, well. Oh, it clips again. Is he ever going to land a hit? I doubt it. Oh yeah, I'll never think for this chapter, for the love of God, bring a rogue or a thief, because assassins can't do that whole treasure thing. And oh god, it took so fucking long. Heh, <laughs> Kaliak, what's up bro? Yeah, it's like, the conversation they have is funny, because it's like, it's like they have, like they were actually kind of pals, and then they just like, talk kind of nicely, it's like, oh by the way, kills wrong. oh well, you got to die. <laughs> yeah. It is funny just to see the relationship these two have. It's like, it's like they're not like, oh god, I've been waiting ages. It's like, hey, it's good to see you again, and now we've got to fight. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, because usually a conversation like this, it's, like, it's a case of, oh, I've been, I have trained for this day, I've been hunting you down, like, I've waited for this. And I, k would be like, oh, I've been so jealous of you. But it's like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's like, you know, uh, by the way, how you been? You know, I, I just wanted more. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but, you know, shit happens. Come on, Josh, don't hate me and stuff like that. I, I like I like that kind of a relationship and dialogue between there. Uh, it's it's so chill. Like it, it's like, you know, there's not really bad blood between the two, they're just doing their jobs, really. Oh, well, Kayak's a bit salty now, but you know. <laughs> what are you gonna do? So yeah, Kayak is mainly axe focused, though. Like, does he have a sword? I think no, I think he's just got axes, so you know. Sword unit is ideal. Remember, he's got the hopping guard. So, or whatever it's called, I can't remember what it's called. So you can't crit him, so you can't rely on using crits. You've got to rely on your strength and your speed and all that jazz. Which is why it's a good idea to use Joshua, because he's usually very fast. And if you give him a really potent weapon like Silver Sword, he can deal quite a bit of damage. Don't? Yeah, so that's what you got to do. <sighs> also, another thing that's interesting. Kaliak, in the Japanese version, he doesn't have a fort, so he doesn't have to like, regain HP or get any boosts. But he would attack you with you within his range. So this one, he stands still, but he has extra number. He has extra bonuses. The other one, he will chase you down. Interesting. Interesting choice. Bro, boy, <laughs> boy, if you don't get your javelin throwing ass out of my face, I will fuck you up something fierce. Oh, so many Pegasus knights. Where do they keep coming from? We hide the familiar. <laughs> they could use the warmer climate. So yeah, like a twelve times two. Mm -hmm. And off Joshua goes. Nope. Can you get the second one? Oh, damn. Good dodge, Kaliak. <laughs> also, I like that, like, indigo um, type armor he's got on. Just kind of looks cool. Now, who do I who do I stab in the face? This dude. <laughs> God, if I was that tiny bit faster. Let's see if he gets the level up where he needs. He's level 15, yeah. He's just very still solid. Nah. Oh, now he's just as... Um, He's just as strong as he is bulky. Interesting. Uh, yeah, just weaken him. Oh, no, <laughs> going in for the kill. He got so offended by the javelin, he has to take out someone else. To be fair, it would be better if Ephraim got that kill, but what are you going to do? And here we go with the guiding ring. Sage or Mage Knight? Mage Knight, because, you know, ding a jig. Granted, for this chapter, Sage might have been better because of the sand, but even then, there's not much sand, and she's already on the grassy plain. Here we go. I am now a mage knight. Bask in my glory, for I am loot and I am amazing. Oh yeah. She may not have as much magic as the live stream, but at least she has speed. <laughs> god, I remember the live stream. Oh my god, her magic's like 20. What's her speed? I think it's like 9. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. I'm also very interested to see what happens with Path Radiance tonight. Because, like, who's going to get what? Will Ike get um, really good level ups? Will Boyd get really good level ups? How will Oscar fare? Well, because you know, I'm obviously going to use them for the early game. How will Soren do? How's Nefli going to do? By the way, I'm saving the arm scroll for Nefli. 
<laughs> because, uh, you guys, why? So she can start with a deep, so she can start with a silk, steel, steel lance for fuck's sake. How will Mia level up? How will Miss do? Yes, I'm using Miss because I like her promotion. How will, um, what's this? How will, um, well, I don't know about Titania. How will Kieran do? How will, how will Soph do? Because I've got to use a bad unit. Might as well use Soph. How will Astrid do? Because if Astrid gets RNG blessed, holy shit, are you in for a treat because you level up so quickly, so frequently. Um, how will, um, what's this say? Well, Gage and Shion is all, it will, that'll be like for when they're available. How will they do? You know, it's always interesting how the other units turn out because in the binding, in um, the live stream, Sacred Stones, a lot of units actually, for the most part, didn't get very good level ups. Like, Gilliam had 14 strength, but he had like, his speed didn't go up once. So I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. Granted, you know, growth rates are a bit more substantial than half Radiance, but anything can happen. So I'm interested to see who gets what. You know, who gets RNG Bless, who gets RNG Soup. Maybe everyone's just consistent across the board. We won't know until we play. But I'm, in, I'm interested to see what happens. You son of a bitch. And you've got a Steel Lance. I'm doubling. <laughs> Better yet, I'm critic. Oh, man. Yeah, fighting Kaelic isn't too hard. Volt is the one you've got to watch out for because Kaelic doesn't have any, like, skills or anything like that. You just got to, um... Then there we go. Whereas Volt has got Pierce, and his stats are just fucking nuts. And, you know, it's lance-based. Also, I think he wields a killer lance, so he's got crit too. In Japanese version, what the hell? Sorry, video must have just accidentally skipped. But, oh well. It does that sometimes. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, the, the video is glitching out a tiny bit. <laughs> On my end, when I'm watching this recording. But it happens, it happens. You know, live stream can't, stop, can't catch everything. <laughs> sometimes it glitches and blips. Just one of those circle of life type things. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a brief intermission for now, but for when we come back, we're going to finish up this chapter, we're going to collect all the treasure, god damn it, why didn't I bring a rogue, and we're going to finally take down, um, you know, we're going to finally put Volta in his place because that creep just needs to die. And Erica and Ephraim are going to be reunited, but something tells me it's not going to be a happy one. Until then, thank you very much for watching, we'll see you next time, take care and have a wonderful day.